President Obama is still waiting for Republicans to pick a nominee to challenge him in next year's election. But that hasn't stopped him from entering the campaign fray. 11 months from Election Day 2012, the president took to the White House briefing room in full-blown campaign mode. Mr. Obama's appearance, announced just minutes beforehand, came shortly after Senate Republicans blocked his nominee to head the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. The president said he would continue to challenge Republicans to defend their position. I will not take any options off the table when it comes to getting Richard Cordray in as director of the Consumer Finance Protection Board. We have a Congress right now, uh, Republicans in Congress right now, uh, who seem to have entirely forgotten how we got into this mess. And part of the reason was because we did not empower our regulators to make sure that they were ensuring fair play. That's what the Consumer Finance Protection Board is designed to do. The president yeah, also expressed Holly frustration with the ongoing stalemate in Congress over extending the payroll tax cut, which is set to expire at the end of the year. And Mr. Obama pledged to delay his holiday plans for as long as it took lawmakers to reach an agreement. You know, when I hear uh, the speaker or the Senate Republican leader, you know, wanting to dicker, wanting to see you know, what can they extract from us in order to get this done, uh, my response to them is just do the right thing. Focus on the American people, focus on the economy right now. Those comments followed a Kansas speech earlier this week in which the president said the country faced a, quote, make or break moment for the middle class. I believe that this country succeeds when everyone gets a fair shot, when everyone does their fair share when everyone plays by the same rules. Many saw those remarks as a general election preview. But they were not the only issues taking on a political context this week. From the administration's announcement today about workers with disabilities to yesterday's decision by Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius to block over-the-counter sales of the morning-after pill to young girls. Mr. Obama endorsed that policy this, today. As the father of two daughters, um, I think it is important for us to make sure that uh, you know, we apply some common sense to various rules when it comes to uh, over-the-counter medicine. And uh, as I understand it, the reason Kathleen made this decision uh, was uh, she could not be confident that a 10-year-old or an 11-year-old going to a drugstore uh, should be able, alongside bubble gum, or batteries uh, be able to buy uh, a, uh, uh, a medication that uh, potentially, if not used properly, could end up having an adverse effect. Uh, and I think most parents would probably feel the same way. The president also responded directly to criticism of his foreign policy by some Republican presidential candidates. Ask Osama bin Laden and uh, the 22 out of 30 top al-Qaeda leaders who've been taken off the field, uh, whether I engage in appeasement or whoever's left out there, ask them about that. With election year around the corner, most moves the president makes going forward will likely be seen through that lens. We're joined now by two political reporters covering the president's re-election campaign, Ann Kornblut, White House reporter for The Washington Post, and Jeff Zeleny, national political correspondent for The New York Times. It's good to have you both with us. Jeff Zeleny, let me start with you. How much is the campaign on the minds of the folks at the White House? Are we right to see everything going forward now through the campaign lens? Well, the campaign is entirely on their minds. Uh, I mean. It's not unusual for that to be the case. It's always the case in a re-election. Um, and everything is going to be viewed through this prism. His State of the Union address is going to be viewed through this prism, and everything is. But 
uh, the White House is still saying that they're focused on policy and focused on things. But the speech in in uh, Kansas earlier this week really sort of begin began to frame this argument that the president is going to make for the next 11 months about he's the defender of the middle class and he is out there fighting for you. And I think that uh, everything he does. Um, is going to be viewed uh, through that prism, you know, rightly or wrongly. He'll be criticized for it, but uh, you know that's uh, how it goes when a president seeks re-election. And Kornblut, is that? I mean, is is that the theme that they've now seized on? And if so, why? Oh, absolutely. I I think we should start counting the number of times we hear him talk about the middle class. Um, people in the re-election campaign are also taking note of when Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich don't use the phrase middle class. Um, th this is all about the economy, but they don't want to be talking about small bore economic issues. They don't even want to just be focusing on jobs because the thinking is they're not going to be able to do too much to turn around unemployment between now and next November. Instead, they want to have a big picture discussion about philosophy and about economic philosophy. And as Jeff said, that's what the speech in Kansas really was all about, was some of the bigger philosophical differences that the campaign hopes to set up between them and whichever of the candidates is their nominee on the other side. Jeff, do they worry that things look too political at this point, or do they just assume that's the way it's going to be? I think that uh, they've stopped worrying about that. I mean, um, um, I think in the early days of the administration, and even um, in the months leading up to the midterm elections last year, I think you know, they were very a careful sort of drawing a line. This is an official trip and, and this is a, a campaign trip. But now everything is sort of blurred. I mean, they still, like the speech in Kansas this week, for example, was an official White House trip. And we're going to see more official trips than uh, a political uh, uh, trips that he's paying for out of the campaign fund. But look, it's just sort of how it is. I mean, he's going to get the upsides and the downsides from a running for reelection. And I mean, everything is political. It just, uh, um, I mean, it's. It, it's hard to escape that. It's not saying he's doing things only for political reasons. I mean, um, obviously there are, are policy things here at well, but uh, I mean, he has the music, the bunting, the banners. He's running for re-election. And, and, and I asked that question because uh, there was the announcement this week, yesterday, by uh, Secretary Sebelius about the con contraceptive, so-called Plan B. Uh, we talked today about the decision coming out of the Labor Department about jobs for people with disabilities. Um, how broadly does this, this campaign, I guess I'm asking, does the umbrella cover everything? Well, there's no way that it won't. And of course, we're going to look at all of these decisions through the lens of the political season. We're doing that on the Republican side and the Democratic side. We're less than a year out. But I do think it's important to note that's why these decisions are coming out of the cabinet agencies. This White House has not been one that has often um, distributed all the goodies to the agencies. This is a very uh, closely controlled White House. But when there are big controversial decisions that need to be made, um, you're going to see the cabinet secretaries doing that. That's why that they have gone out of their way to say that, in particular, the Plan B decision was one that was made by Secretary Sebelius. For better or for worse, they don't want to have that one be too closely tied to the president, even though obviously he he did acknowledge that he agreed with it today. But nonetheless, on some of the, the, the um, trickier issues, you're going to see those go back out to the agencies because they know all too well it's all going to look political no matter what they do. Jeff Zeleny, on the one hand, the president's dealing with the Republicans in Congress, uh, opposing much of, if not all, of what he would like to see pass. But meantime, he is facing the Republicans running for president. How is the White House reacting to the sudden emergence of Newt Gingrich? Well, they're certainly intrigued by it. I mean, they have been focused with almost a single focus on uh, Mitt Romney because they, like most other people, assumed that he had a lot of advantages going into this and he might be the nominee. But the White House is trying to keep an open mind about the possibility of Newt Gingrich. It's interesting. Um, if you talk to Democrats who worked in Washington during the Clinton administration, they're sort of viewing Newt Gingrich through an old lens. But some of these Obama political hands did not work in the White House or in Washington during that time, and they're trying to view him through a new lens. They're really trying to f uh, find out what he's tapping into out there. So the focus is still on Romney, but they are going to begin to sort of bring uh, Newt Gingrich into the fold. And the added benefit here, a long campaign on the Republican side, Democrats think, the president's advisors think that uh, that helps him at the end of the day. Um, so we'll see. But they are, are intrigued and uh, perhaps doing a bit of a mischief making here by um, uh, highlighting uh, Speaker Gingrich's uh, rise a little. What would you add to that, Anne? What, what are you hearing about uh, thinking, the thinking, the Obama thinking about Gingrich? Well, Jeff is absolutely right. I will say there are a few people, perhaps the ones who 
were who did live through the Clinton era who are just the teensiest bit gleeful at the prospect of Newt Gingrich as the Republican nominee. But uh, he does have something that Mitt Romney doesn't that could be dangerous for the president, which is he has a, a way to tap into the Hispanic vote. He has this expense, expansive network that is um, Latino. He has himself learned, been learning to speak Spanish. And um, the polling data suggests that he could do better among Hispanics in certain key states, places like Colorado and in the West, and especially in Florida. And that is something that if a Republican nominee could do, just do a tiny bit better with Hispanics, could make him much more threatening to, to President Obama. So that is something that his reelection campaign is keeping an eye on. But and finally, for the longest time, the White House has seen Mitt Romney as the president's toughest potential opponent. Do they still feel that way? Um, in some ways, yes. They see him certainly as um, somebody who had at one point in time been able to tap into the centrist vote and to some independence. But I think, if anything, they see him now as weaker than he was before. They do think he's going to have to run to the right of Newt Gingrich now that Gingrich has presented such a threat. And they think that only works to their advantage. How do you, what, what do you hear from the White House about their view of, of Romney, who was their, the assumed uh, nominee for the Republican Party, I guess many people thought. They definitely are not uh, taking their eye off Mitt Romney because they believe that he is uh, well-disciplined, well-financed, well-structured. He's been thinking about running for president uh, for a long time. This is his uh, second go-round, so he is experienced in that front. So the White House... Uh, uh, for the first time, there's a bit of disagreement. They're not sure, frankly, who the nominee is going to be. But most people believe in their heart of hearts that uh, Mitt Romney probably has a better shot at this, and they are still going to uh, keep their focus on him. They believe, at the end of the day, all these flip-flops that he um, has had um, over the years on some social issues actually could make him more appealing to independent voters because he's flexible. So the White House is, uh, is very much uh, not losing focus uh, on Governor Romney. Well, the whole thing has certainly uh, gotten more active just in the last few days. Jeff Zeleny and Cornblue, we thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.